Hey guys, it's Philly here, and in this episode, I'm going to be sharing free logo design books that you must get for inspiration. Keep it locked. Welcome back, everyone. So, in this episode, I've pulled out three of my favorite logo design books that I feel you must get for inspiration. As we know, inspiration plays a huge part of the designer's process and development of a project. I used to absolutely hate books. But ever since I went back into education, I've now started to collect my own and I have a whole collection of inspiration books and things for me to read and learn. I now prefer looking at books and being away from the computer. There's nothing worse than sitting in front of a computer screen trying to come up with ideas. The only thing I use the internet for is researching about a client and then maybe looking at logos that have been done before and the sort of things that I should avoid. So let's look at the books I pulled out to show you. Right, so the first book is by Yazaburu. I'm um, sorry if I've pronounced that wrong, but this is a European trademark and symbol collection. And this is volume four. And it was published in 1992. So it has some age to it, but it's in great condition and they are still available. Um, I've put a link in the description below. So it has around 2,000 marks and they're all in alphabetical order. The marks were all submitted by various companies and designers that are based in Europe. I find this book so good for gathering inspiration for things like letter marks and monograms. And as we know, a letter mark is a singular letter form and a monogram is a combination of two letter forms. The style of design that I'm into is quite minimal and this is what I like about this book as well. And you can really see that I take my inspiration from this style of work. And here's a couple of um, letter marks and monograms that I've created and I've obviously taken inspiration from this book. Another awesome thing I like about this um, book is that each mark is numbered and you can go to the back of the index and actually find out who created that mark, um, the location and what the logo was used for. So yeah, I find this book really great for inspiration. So yeah, this was book number one. So the second book is another one by the man Yazaburu and it's called Trademarks and Symbols and it was published in 1973. So it's a very old book and I'm over the moon with the condition so I need to make sure I look after it. It features 1500 trademarks and symbols which are from designers and companies around the world. So a lot more broader in this one. And it focuses on letter forms again, which are also in alphabetical order. And each mark is numbered again, so you can visit the index at the back to see who designed it, etc. There's some really cool ideas though in this book. Um, I've seen some like animals um, in the shapes of letter forms. So if I just scroll through, oh here we go. The letter V, and you've got some birds in the shape of a V and I know there was um, a letter S yeah here in the shape of some fish which it looks really cool there is some more information in this book though it has some history about marks and how they were used thousands of years ago which is really interesting and good to know but it's, it's absolutely crazy seeing these marks that were made all that time ago and how us designers are looking back at the history to gather inspiration for today. And, you know, we can see by, by looking at the book, the designs are very simple and so clean as well. And I mention this a lot in my videos about simplistic designs, about how major brands today are kind of like going backwards to go forwards. Like for example, the previous Volkswagen logo, which was quite complex, has, has now turned into a 2D flat design. And if you look back at the evolutionary of that logo, 
it's very similar to the one they had in 1967. But I think as well, with, with technology growing, screen sizes becoming smaller, logos need to work in smaller scales. So yeah, simplistic designs is the way forward in my eyes. So the final book, I saved the best one till last. It's Trademarks Designed by Chamaya from Geismar. And this was published in 2000. It's a lovely book and well put together. It features all the marks designed by Chamaya from Geismar. And they have played a huge role um, within my inspiration over the last few years. I only got into logo design three, four years ago, but I've learned a lot from reading about them and Sagi Havif, um, who is a partner at Chamaya from Geismar but it has a diverse set of logos from letter marks, logo types and symbols. But it doesn't just showcase their work, there are insights to how they think and work as designers. So it's sharing their process, which is really helpful and great to know. And the crazy thing is, there's logos in here that they designed 40 years ago, which are still being used today. So here we have it. Chase Bank, which we're all very familiar with. And I pulled up some images of how this looks in today's era. And it still looks so modern and clean. And it was their thought process that made these logos last so long. They thought about where the logo will be seen in small, large scales. And because of that, the logos have just adapted over time and haven't needed to change. And if you look at their marks, they're just so simple. And this is the approach that I take when designing a logo. Just some really lovely marks in here. So yeah, I highly recommend this book. And this was the final book out of the three. I hope you enjoyed this little episode of the books that I've showed you. I really do find books so helpful for inspiration. So if you like this episode, hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up with all my weekly content. Take it easy and I'll catch you same time next week.